I just didn't heard a bunch of boom, bang, bang, and that's all I heard. Cody Edwards was up doing laundry when he saw flames out his window. You do laundry at night, it saves you on your electric bill. And in this case, it may have saved lives. Those flames engulfed his neighbor's home, and he knew he needed to help. Came out the door and everything was orange, so I just ran over there and kicked in the side door and got him out of the house. So. Saving a mother and her 11-year-old son both asleep inside, he even brought them inside his house to keep warm while firefighters went to work. I'm just glad they all got out, you know, safe and sound. Besides the house, the family also lost their car. They nearly lost their lives. And then fortunately, they also lost their cat and their dog inside the fire. The firefighters couldn't find the family's pets. And by the time the flames were out, the home was gone. Our first thought is, of course, is putting the fire out and saving as much as we can. And then we turn our attention, you know, our, our, our attention to the, the residents and see what we can do to help them. Which means finding the family a place to stay. It's hard on everybody, but, you know, especially when you're leave out in your pajamas. You know. We're told the family denied any help from the Red Cross. Meanwhile, Edwards says he was just helping a neighbor in need. Yeah, that's probably about it. You know, right place, right time. In Sepulpa, Ethan Hutchins, Tulsa Channel 8. You knew tonight he's the first recognized martyr to have been born in the United States. And tomorrow, very special mass will take place in honor of Father Stanley Rother. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Mark Brownshaw. And I'm Neely Jones. Channel 8's Burt Mumolo took a trip to Rother's hometown. It seems only fitting that at Holy Trinity Catholic Church, where the windows are adorned with a multitude of saints, a hometown hero may soon be displayed amongst them. He celebrated his first mass here on this altar here. In the corner of the church, there is already a mini museum with all things Father Rother. And the other facts, you know, he's got his pipe. A priest in Guatemala for over a decade, he became a marked man for his work with the poor. In 1981, three armed men raided his church. They ended up shooting him twice, once in the temple of the head, and killed him. It was just last year that Father Rother was officially declared a martyr. I've been in touch with the Rothers down here all through the years. Lee Rother is a third cousin from Minnesota. The most painful thing I think that uh, they experienced was a few years later they went to Guatemala and they sat in the room where he was murdered. That must have been very, very painful to his parents. After his death, his parishioners wanted to bury him there, but his family wanted him home. They came to a compromise with his heart enshrined in a church in Guatemala. But the rest of him? They sent his body here and it was interred out at uh, Holy Trinity Cemetery about three miles south of here. And there on the front gate are instructions on how to find his grave. But when you do, there's another sign indicating that this is now his former resting place. As part of the canonization process, what they have to do is they have to prove that this man really existed. Now that they have, tomorrow's mass will declare him blessed and Catholics will be on the lookout for miracles to attribute to him which could green light his sainthood. Just a tremendous thing. Uh, all the Rothers are so thrilled. In Oak Archie, Bert Mumolo tells us Channel 8. That's the reason why I'm okay with what Tulsa police decide to do. Benjamin Torero may not look like a crime-fighting crusader, but that's exactly what he is, and he has the videos to prove it. All part of a growing video archive of his efforts to stop lawbreakers he encounters. Lee Kandora Henry. Torero is a 47-year-old private security guard in East Tulsa. He recently allowed us to ride along with him while on patrol. We're going to go to this apartment. Uh, we're going to drive around. He keeps watch in 14 apartment complexes throughout the week. They're very close proximity, so I'm able to hit them uh, five to eight times a night. He tells us he mostly comes across teens stealing cars or burglarizing apartments, and he's caught it all on his body camera. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. The dangers are obvious and far exceed the job description of a security guard. But Torero says the risks are worth it because he knows he's making a difference, catching crooks and often holding them until police arrive. I think I'm needed. I think I'm needed. Um, to patrol these areas, work together with police officers. Torero was born in the Dominican Republic. He moved to Michigan when he was 14, where he found local fame as a boxer. Then years later, he landed in Tulsa after pursuing his dream to be a salsa singer.
In the end, a friend suggested that Torero try to become a police officer. He settled instead on something more possible, becoming a security guard. So they'll come from that side? They'll come from that side here. Benjamin says what separates him from other security guards is his willingness to intervene with kindness. Not anybody can be a police officer. Not anybody can be a preacher. They're about to do we. Two careers, Torero has rolled into one. He says his goal is not to ruin the lives of those he comes across. If I was gun ho, I see a gun on your waistband, I shoot you, I kill you. When we go to court, totally, ju totally justifiable. Thankfully, Torero says he's never had to shoot anyone on his properties. Instead of making citizens arrest, he documents those he detains. Because at some point they're going to come back out on the street. So an arrest is relevant. Tulsa police know Torero, and while they don't endorse amateur crusaders hitting the streets to fight crime, they regard him as genuine and frequently helpful. If I see people inside of vehicles, I approach them and I try to get their information. Torero knows some people may think he's crazy to be going at it alone, night after night, and taking on dangerous characters. Stay there! But he says he's willing to take chances because what he's doing really matters. If you don't care about this job, then you have no business being a security guard. With that attitude, it's hard to argue he's right where he belongs. In East Tulsa, Ethan Hutchins, Tulsa's Channel 8. News Channel 8's Angelica Brown shows us tonight that $47 million piece of the pie is in the process of being removed. Angelica. Yeah, Mark, and to be clear, hotel owners across the state back teacher pay raises. They just don't think their industry is the place to be looking for money. Let's check in right now with uh, what our photojournalist Paul Howard is seeing. He is, uh, looks like he is heading from downtown towards South Tulsa. And right now he is doing exactly what we want people to do out on the roadways. He is going below the speed limit, taking it slow, and it looks like others out on the roadways are also doing the same. Last night and early this morning, of course, it was full, but nearly full tonight and really just spectacular. We've got some amazing photojournalist Paul Howard shot this tonight of the moon, obscured a little bit by some of the high clouds that were moving in. But again, if you feel like you missed the show, it is still out there if you want to check out the near full moon.